What's going on everyone and welcome back to another video. So I think we're about two to three months out from brand new iPhones, which is always really exciting. But with new iPhones comes new software and with new software comes new betas. And I'm sure you can gather where I'm going with this. I have an iPhone 12 Pro Max that's currently running the public iOS 15 beta on it. And we're gonna talk about some of my favorite features and enhancements that I've noticed while running the software on this phone. Now, full disclosure, if you're interested in the iPad OS beta, I have that on my iPad Pro as well, but that's going to come out in a separate video, mainly because ever since iPad OS was introduced, I feel like it slowly changed our expectations of what the iPad line can be, and that's doubly so now that the M1 iPad Pros exist. So again, that'll be a separate video, but make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, if you really wanna catch that one. Now, let's talk iOS beta. Okay, so if you've seen any previous video we've made about beta software, whether it's iOS or Android, you'll know that I am a sucker for anything involving a visual redesign. And that honestly holds true for iOS 15 as well. Now I know you're probably thinking that's kind of lame, but you'd be surprised what a fresh coat of paint can do whenever it comes to how you feel about the operating system that you're using. And the redesign system apps on iOS 15 look really dope. The first one that I noticed was the weather application. It's pretty different compared to iOS 14. It feels like there's a lot more information here, but whenever you start comparing the information that's presented in 15 versus 14, you'll realize that there's a lot similar in terms of the information itself. It's just presented a little differently, and quite honestly, I'm a big fan of the visual improvements. I also like that the weather animations are now full screen, and one thing in particular that I really like is that you can opt to get notified when there's like rain or snow or sleet or some sort of different type of weather in your area, you can get notified for when that weather is going to start and for when that weather is going to stop. So redesign weather is pretty dope. When you scroll down to the bottom though, to see who Apple credits for the information they're getting, still no mention of dark sky. I feel like a lot of people are gonna be bummed that that hasn't been integrated yet. I don't know, maybe we'll see what the future holds, but other apps have been redesigned too especially everyone's favorite navigation app. Now I'm not talking about Google Maps and I'm not talking about Waze. I'm talking about Apple Maps. So the colors of Apple Maps have been tweaked a little bit. It's really pleasing to the eye, to be honest with you. And there's a decent more amount of detail and 3D architecture to the look of Apple Maps too. So if you're one of the few people who rely on Apple Maps to get around on a daily basis, I think you'll be a big fan of the new design that's coming with it. And Safari also got redesigned too. The biggest change you'll notice is that the address bar has been moved to the bottom of the screen whenever you're just navigating a website. And as you start scrolling up and down, the address bar goes away, so it leads to this really nice full screen browsing experience. It's actually pretty dope. Now when you push on the address bar, it jumps back up to the top of the screen so you can navigate to whatever website, and that looks really familiar. And my favorite feature is the more tabs you have open, you can actually swipe on the address bar when it's on the bottom of your screen, and you can shuffle back and forth between all of your tabs. Instead of having to push a menu icon and see a grid of all your tabs, you can now just swipe on the address bar that's at the bottom. So redesign apps can be kind of lame, but still looking super dope. FaceTime also has some cool new features on the way that I'm calling pandemic-inspired updates. So it's no secret that we've all been a little more distanced than we probably like to be from our friends, family, and loved ones given the past year or year and a half or so. But Apple is bringing some really cool changes to FaceTime in order to make times like that a little easier to bear, hopefully. So there are a couple of new features that I wanna cover, starting with grid view. So if you're on a FaceTime call with multiple people, you can now go into grid view, which will basically assign each person a tile space size on your screen, and they'll all be the same size. So if you're someone who likes to have more of like a uniformed or more like a rigid type of FaceTime call, I think this is going to be a feature change that you're going to really like. There's now portrait mode, which will basically blur the background behind you in order to create a more personal effect whenever you're on a FaceTime call. Spatial audio is coming as well. So if you're on a call with a pair of headphones that are compatible with spatial audio, you'll hear other people's voice directionally based on how they're positioned on the call itself. I think that's pretty cool. And Apple is introducing another feature called SharePlay, which is going to be 
essentially a way for you to share your screen if you wanted to, I don't know, browse the web with friends or go through photos with friends or something like that. And you can even take it a step further, including listening to music with people on the call and also watching movies and TV shows with the folks on the call. Now, Apple is making SharePlay an API, so other developers are going to be able to get behind something like this and optimize their app in order to work and be able to be shared on a FaceTime call itself. Now, all those features are dope, but my favorite one has to be the fact that you can now have a FaceTime call with anyone, regardless of what kind of phone or operating system they're using. So yeah, you can now assign a unique web link to a FaceTime call and also create a calendar event with that unique web link. So if someone is using, let's say, I don't know, a Windows computer or an Android phone, they can now click that web link and join you on your FaceTime call using the browser that's on their particular device. To be fair, a lot of this reminds me a lot of what you'll find on applications like Zoom and Microsoft Teams. And if you've ever used a browser to join a meeting with any of those apps, you'll know that it's not the hottest experience. And uh, the same holds true with joining FaceTime calls using a link. So just keep in mind that while it is great that you'll be able to FaceTime with anyone on any operating system now, if you're joining through a browser, it's probably not going to be the best experience, but we are in beta and Apple's typically pretty good about optimizing stuff like this. So I do expect that experience to improve over time. I'm just glad to see that we finally have something like that. But I think my favorite feature so far has been focus mode, which when you think about how many different features are coming in iOS 15, focus mode is actually really simple. Think of it as kind of like a customizable do not disturb mode where you can go in there and select from pre-installed presets or create your own based on what you like to do. And essentially you can tailor a focus mode to select particular applications that can notify you or even select particular contacts that can notify you when you're doing something. And that'll essentially help you get whatever you're trying to get done, done with hopefully less distractions. So let's say you're working. Maybe you want to create a focus mode for work where only your work applications on your phone notify you, or maybe when you're done with work, you want to create a social focus. So only your social media applications notify you and your work apps stay silent. I've personally tried focus mode for going to the gym and it silences a lot of other applications that are not going to help me get my workout done. And I can even tailor my notifications so only my favorite contacts can reach me while I'm working out. Now, another cool part about focus mode is that when you are in a focus mode, it syncs across all of your devices that are running iOS 15, iPad OS 15, whatever the software might be. And you can even choose to notify contacts that can't currently get through to you that you are in a particular focus mode and you'll get back to them whenever you're done. So all in all, I gotta say, it's something that's super simple, but super helpful and I really, really enjoy it. These two features don't necessarily make the main list, but when I think about the functionality and when I think about how well these two actually work kind of hand in hand, I think it's definitely worth at least mentioning as kind of like a runner up, right? Plus that just means more bonus content on the iOS beta, which is a win-win. Now those two features are live text and camera and visual lookup. Live text and camera is actually really cool. Basically you can point your camera viewfinder at something that contains text of some kind. And this actually applies whether or not you are live in the camera or if you've already taken the photo and go and look at it through your photos app. You can long press on any text that might be in that image and you can copy that text and paste it into another application. Or if you need to look up something, you can long press and hold and press look up and it'll pull up results on Safari, which is actually really cool. Now visual lookup, think of it as that, but with objects or subjects. And my favorite part of something like visual lookup is whenever I pull up a picture of my dog, I'm able to swipe up from the bottom of the photo. Artificial intelligence is able to identify that it's a dog. And whenever I push that result, it actually searches the web for dogs that look similar to the one in the photo. And it's actually correctly identified my particular dog as a Shiba Inu. So this is really cool. And it reminds me a lot of something like Google Lens although Google Lens is going to be able to identify a lot more objects. But hey, both of these features are currently in beta. There are some inaccuracies between the two, but either way, the functionality and the feature set is really, really cool. 
definitely worth mentioning, and we'll see how they improve as iOS 15 gets closer and closer to that stable release. All right, that just about does it on some of my initial thoughts with the iOS 15 public beta and some of the new features that are coming whenever the new iPhones drop here in the next two to three months. What do you think the new iPhones are gonna be called? 12? Ultra Pro iPhone Ultra, okay, 12S, 13. We don't really know what they're gonna be called, but iOS 15 should be dropping alongside those new iPhones, and there's a lot to be excited about, both from a hardware perspective with the new phones and from a software perspective with iOS 15. Again, if you're looking for iPad OS, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Stay safe, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.